powerhouse. All right. So I'm going to start speaking about the kind of change that can be induced by games that all of you people create. Right. A powerhouse, very simple concept. The objective is to ensure can we teach a human to save electricity? And this was the core based around which they created this simple game called powerhouse. And this document entails how the game used to flow and I'll quickly speak about it and also share the link for you people to read this document later. Basically, you were put into a game based environment where you would move from room to room and if lights were on, you were told to switch them off. And if you switch them off, you were given reward points. That's the entire gamification strategy that most of the learning games now are uh, picking onto. It's about making a learner do an action. If the action is done well, there is a feedback. If the feedback has a positive or a negative impact, and then there is a comprehension of that feedback by the learner, and a cycle continues of this cyclic action to start hardwiring behaviors for people. And they realize that by simply people playing this game, they were able to slowly induce them also do the same actions in real life. So it is just not about whether a human can do the right activity in a game environment because he's playing a game, but does that action also translate into real change? And they mapped the, the game environment into the real life change uh, and they found out that people do take the learnings forward. Progression is slow, right? But progression is there. It is not as if a change can't happen, but the change is completely dependent on the speed of uh, each human being, how quickly he or she would like to implement, learn and implement the change, right? So I'll, I'll share this document, very interesting. Uh, this also has another uh, article about eBay. They created something. I'm gonna scroll down to the last piece that I really wanna speak about. So there you go. Uh, fun energy, making energy saving fun. What you saw on top was uh, a game created by a team of Harvard uh, students and professors. And here you have a company that created a game for children. So same concept, you know, we are trying to teach the human how to save electricity. Uh, the dynamics are different because your core of the audience is different, right? Over here, it's more animated. There are monkeys. It's, it's fun for kids to play and then apply the change. So the purpose of showcasing this document was to start with very simple activities or behaviors that we as humans can learn via a game based environment, right? Traditionally, we are too used to learning by books and uh, reading, observing and by people telling us what is right and wrong. But with the change in technology and with mobiles becoming pocket friendly to everyone, we all have access now to a very different domain of learning in which is game based, right? So how is every human using their free time and the different kinds of games available in the market to pick up new skills? Um, it's, it's fairly uh, evident in front of all of us, right? Now, let me close this and uh, move on to a little L&D piece over here. So this is Bloom's taxonomy. This is my domain of learning and development. Um, I don't know how many of you have um, ever come across this particular model and uh, Bloom's taxonomy purely speaks about and the triangle goes from bottom up. So if you look at the last uh, leg here, it says remembering, recalling relevant knowledge from long term memory. That's the step one of learning. If you can recall something, that means you have learned it and that knowledge is somewhere tucked away into your brain. Step two of the Bloom's taxonomy is making sense of the material you have learned. So it is just not about recalling information, but step two is, do you understand what you're recalling, right? Step three is applying that, using that knowledge gained in a new way. So let's take an example over here of uh, driving a car. If you're a passenger in a car and you observe a person using a handbrake in an emergency situation, you have observed that information and acquired it, 
right now i'm not saying that all of you should try to be in an emergency situation in which you need to pull the handbrake to see if that method works but you can remember it because you've seen it happen you understand the dynamics as to when the handbrake is pulled which way did the car go which way did the human sitting in the car go etc cetera, etc cetera. and then the third stage comes applying it if ever you are in a situation like that uh, in a split second your brain is powerful enough to recall that information give you a reminder of what had happened then so that you can apply that knowledge immediately now this the example i've taken is an extreme example here right but the reason i'm sharing this example is that every piece of knowledge that we acquire can get hardwired the moment we apply it in our own fashion and that is what is critical for inducing change in ourselves right the next step to mass to uh, blooms is analyzing evaluating and creating i'll again share this to with all of you the link for you to go through this and um, uh, manisha can be kind enough to send uh, my contact details to anybody who's on this uh, particular forum right now i'll be happy to have um, an elongated dialogue around the lnd space of this right so let me move on from here and um, right so any questions so far uh, please raise your hand if there's a question i would love to take them at this point in time before we deep dive all right can the approach be used in a corporate environment as well uh, yes the approach can be used in the corporate environment and that is exactly what we will slowly be moving into as this talk progresses um, in the corporate environment well, it's it's a very structured environment for the learner right people have a job to do while they do their job there is an lnd department trying to upskill people on either functional skills or behavioral skills now functional a person will definitely learn because if he does not learn the functionality of his job then he might not have a job right so a human is more inclined to pay attention to the functional side of his job but what happens on the behavioral side and even if somebody tries to groom and teach people the softer elements or soft skills as we call it uh, in the corporate space does a human apply them right now this is a catch 22 situation for most people in the corporate space they will learn it but will they apply it we don't know because there is always a fear factor that when they will apply a new behavior that they have learned within the organization and if it backfires what happens to their reputation what happens to their job right so it's always better and that's the reason why um, whoever asked this question i'm presuming uh, you have experienced this before that in the corporate space now um, a lot of the training is becoming hands on right classroom based uh, was earlier just somebody speaking about it then we moved into watching videos now it's all hands on practice so when you share a certain knowledge you also make the people apply that knowledge in different examples right to practice the application however having said that there is still one more conundrum in this entire complex situation of learning because you have other 19 people if there are 20 in that room getting trained there are 19 other people looking at you and that puts the human being in a very very difficult spot right not everybody has the capacity of um, i'll i'll come back to that question in a second not everybody has the capacity of being able to um, have 19 eyes look at them and still perform at top uh, uh, perform at top peak right so that's where the games nowadays are being able to give that fail safe environment and platform for people to apply what is being taught to them um, in simple examples one of the videos that i'll be showing you is on our game on leadership and team management right our game has now managed to ensure that knowledge is relayed absorbed and applied within the fail safe environment so that once the player completes the entire learning journey of the game then is when he or she can go back and very easily apply the new learnings onto the floor within the organization uh, i'm going to now move on to the question so that had come up give me a second here uh 
Okay, learning based games tend to have a poor receiving and keeping a player engaged can become difficult since people tend to play games due to the freedom they provide in the context. What is the opinion on the length of such games? Or so if I speak about to particularly answer this thought, um, if you speak about uh, the amount of time that a person spends on a game like this and how long you should design a game for, it depends on what you want to communicate, right? I was watching on the 17th a, a talk by uh, Ismail, if I'm not mistaken. He spoke about the, the circulars, the three concentric circles of game design, right? Right at the center of that uh, element of designing a game is the core that you want to relay. So you need to define that first. Right. Once you have what you want to train and what you want to teach, the length of the game is going to come out of that stem. Right. Only then will you be able to look at how expansive you want to make your game. So our games, people can play it for four hours, six hours, eight hours, ten hours, completely dependent on the person's learning curve. Right. So I hope I've managed to answer that question. There was another question and a thought about uh, neuroscience that had come up. Is Bloom's taxonomy relevant to neurotypical individuals? If not, then won't gaming strategies develop using this kind of idea in mind be inaccessible to individuals with learning disorders? So interesting viewpoint, right? Now, Bloom's taxonomy has been designed keeping a, a functional human in mind. Right. Obviously, if you put in other caveats into the learning ability of a human, there can be further bifurcations of the taxonomy or levels that you can create for your own self. Right. So if there is a disorder in an individual, the application might change. But at the end of the day, when that skill has been acquired with a person with a disability, the relaying of that skill in live life actually runs through the Bloom's taxonomy. The person, when he's doing a certain action, the, the memory will come back, then how it was done will come back, then the application will come back to their mind, then how they executed that task for themselves will come back. All of this happens in micro milliseconds into the brain, right? And then they ultimately reach the creative side of it. Let me try to bring up that screen again. Quick question, is, is my screen visible? No, okay, so let me just, uh, there you go. So the last leg of, of Bloom's taxonomy is creating, right? We can surely say that even if you look at people with disabilities, right, once they acquire a new skill, they start creating new things with that skill they have learned. And that's the top level of execution of the theorem of tax of Bloom's, right? That once you've acquired, applied, analyzed, evaluated, then you start creating new stuff. That means the learning is complete for that particular skill. Now, let me go back and take a simple example here. Back on the screen. Excellent. Um, let's talk about brushing teeth, right? An activity that all of us do daily. I want all of you to think back to your childhood when you were being taught this particular skill how to brush your teeth, right? From step one of holding a brush, step two of taking out the toothpaste onto the brush, and then a simple left to right movement, right? Now, Brushing of teeth being taught and being learned at when you're two years old, three years old, four years old is very different from how you apply that knowledge when you're 40, 45. At this point in time, I'm sure all of you can uh, probably wake up on a chilly winter morning when none of you want to get out of bed, walk into your washroom and with your eyes still shut. And we've all done this as children when we had to get ready for school, right? We never used to want to go to school. We would walk in and we would brush our teeth with the eyes shut. No electricity also. If it's pitch black, we can still brush our teeth. Left, right, top down, back of the molars, clean the tongue, everything. How has that knowledge progressed? We started with a simple action of simple left to right movement that our parents taught us. How have we managed to take that simple action of left and right to a far more complex movement and dexterity of the hand with the mouth of which all crevice we would like to clean. So that's the progression that Bloom's taxonomy does. So the last element is creating. Every human being has now created their own method of brushing teeth. It's new, it's unique for everyone. 
we can't say that each one of us brush our teeth in the same way right the the end objective will be the same for all of us clean teeth but the process that we take to reach that goal is different for all of us and that is the beauty of uh, how we people learn and how we people adapt to new things if i would have been taught or if all of us would have been taught in a military regime how to brush our teeth i think all of us would be doing the same thing but we had the pleasure of adapting our own styles right so we've kind of taken it and making the whole activity of brushing teeth very very simple and unique to ourselves in similar light let me pose another question to all of you and you can probably start shooting some answers on the discussion forum right let's take an example here let's say it's uh, <clears throat> again let's go back to school because now we have mobiles right and uh, mobiles have torches let's go back to the day and age when there were no mobiles we had landlines and there were flashlights in the house and we had to keep a candle and a matchbox if electricity went so imagine this is middle of the night and electricity goes now you need to go from your bedroom to your kitchen where the candle and the matchbox is kept question for all of you how many of you do you think can walk from your bedroom to your kitchen and pick up that candle without uh, injuring yourself or harming yourself or banging into a door i can excellent anybody else most of us can right how have you managed to acquire this habit two three things spatial knowledge of our house where we live and the fact that we have walked that path from our bedroom to the kitchen so many multiple times muscle memory thank you so many multiple times that we are now blindfolded and we can still get to the kitchen and not harm ourselves but would you be able to do the same activity when you were 5 years old you wouldn't right how have you managed to now move from that stage at 5 to when you're 45 and not hurt yourself that's the growth in the hardwiring of a muscle memory which i would like to relate here and call it a behavior it's a behavior left foot right foot right turn left turn you just hardwire things right and it's so many times that now it's become a behavior in you similarly games the ability of happening having a cyclic motion in a game sharing knowledge applying the knowledge feedback with the gamification elements of getting some points pluses and minuses and then reapplying that knowledge in the game environment this cyclical movement is what helps hardwire a behavior and behaviors as strong as leading a team right mehir says no i don't know what that no was for was it for the question of banging your head when you're 5 years old i'll wait for him to come back right so um you know in in the crux of the matter in in very simple words behaviors can easily be taught we so i showed you an example of uh, a simple game which is trying to teach how to shut lights so that you can save electricity now let me try and pull up a small video of our leadership game i like you people to uh, pay a little attention to it because then we can have a few questions around the video and before i do that let me just take this thought it's also better logical thinking with age with the terror of unknown most of us do can do similar takes at places where we haven't spent enough time to build muscle memory but just enough to have a detailed of mental up that's correct right so it's it's a slow progression it's about different things it's about if you're a carpenter you will learn sawing first and then you will learn the different uh, parts of that skill right what are we discussing it's not about what you want to learn it's about whether repetitive action creates a mental map for you it does and can that repetitive action be created in games and that's the whole objective the games are now giving us that ability of a platform which is easily usable by people because we have mobile so the reach has gone immense it's gone global at the drop of a hat like that right until mobiles and 5g 3g 4g were not there everything was pinpointed and shortened because the reach wasn't there now as developers as designers as creators you people have the power of taking a very simple game to the entire globe at the press of enter when you launch your game and making sure that your game whatever skill it wants to teach be it functional or be it behavioral can be taught 
and learned by anybody sitting in a different part of the world even in a different language you know now you have translators so if you give, make the game in english you can translate it to a different language so even language is no more a barrier the objective and coming back to what i was mentioning earlier that uh, in, in regards to how long do you want the game to be the game is defined by what you want to teach the the longevity of the game right so uh, it it all comes down to identification of the concept first so even though we are speaking about lnd at the end of the day game creation is critical right you can first put your learning content you can say that this is my learning content list of 10 content pieces or 10 things i want to teach now let me go back to creating a, a, a wireframe of how can i communicate this message right and when we watch the video uh, that exact piece of bridging of how to communicate a message to a learner will be something that you might be able to see and we'll discuss that right how would we take individual game based behavior change and extend it into a community um so th there are two ways of looking at this particular question how do you take an individual change and apply it to a community let's say let's look at let's look at the example of uh, um, powerhouse right if you you are individually learning to save electricity in your house or your dorm how does this get extended to society or community if you go to somebody else's house or if you go and you're walking or if you have a common area in your colony or your resident and you see light and electricity being wasted you'll inquire about it because consciously now you want to save electricity and if people say yes nobody is using this area you'll shut the light simple extension of personal to community you can only reach community once you have the personal knowledge if you don't have the personal knowledge community uh, change is never going to happen right so boond boond se ghada banta hai hindi ki bade muhavre aur kahawatein hai hamari every drop and as individuals it is our drop that is going to add to the community change right now obviously you can have a very different discussion about looking at the kind of change you want to induce into community and the kind of knowledge that has to be built into a game uh, we leave that for a separate time now um, i'm going to come back to these other points later on let me move on to the video so that we can also have a dialogue around and i want to showcase to you um, the the structure of a game how games can be designed because that is where your core lies and i'll deep dive into how the knowledge gets relayed via the game so give me a moment here <clears throat> I'm an audible Yes, we can hear you. My apologies for that. No, Airtel please. is supposed to be blamed. Okay, so looks like uh, uh, you got stuck again. We'll just be back. I don't know. Anyways, um, so uh, let me. It's going to be a bit slow the way it's working. So. I still haven't shared my screen. When I do that, I will ask the question, and I will look forward to seeing the thumbs up. Just give me a moment. Screen visible. Uh, Excellent. Thank you. Okay. We're seeing a lot of windows, but it should be visible soon. Ask as many questions as you want about what you see, because this is where you go. I have 
video working fine? Okay, that's a hand raised. That means it's not. Yeah, working. so I can hear you, but uh, the screen uh, is not working. Maybe you could stop share and share again. And uh, just check the audio option. Uh, hi, everyone. Sorry for the lag and uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. Really appreciate you all hanging around. There's a little bit more to go for uh, Manikya's very relevant and impactful talk. Um, so sit tight, hang tight. We'll be back soon. Am I audible to people? Could I get a quick thumbs up? All right. And you can see me on the screen. All right. So I'm going to present again. And let's hope that this time it works and the speed is back up to normal. And if I get a thumbs up, then I'll quickly play it. OK, excellent. So I'm going back to the video now, and I will only come back on the screen once uh, the video is over. Uh, Manisha, and in case if uh, there is a lag or it acts up, just, just ping me on the side on the discussion forum, please. Thank you. People affected. Here, you're part of a group of volunteers who become stranded on a desert island on your way to take part in a humanitarian mission. Your goal to lead your team to escape in the shortest time possible and with the highest number of leadership points. The plan to build a hot air balloon using the construct with the most unique simulator on the and observe your progress. Each task has different characteristics. Make sure that these suit the person who will have to execute it. This decision will depend on the efficiency and motivation of each person. Watch the indicators to find out your energy level, your team's synergy level, your leadership points, and the progress of the project. Each character also has their own indicators for motivation level, development, and task progress. You'll be able to use your energy points to carry out different actions. Click on any character to activate the delegate action. You'll first have to and complete the corresponding lesson. After you do that, you'll be able to use the delegate action. Continue learning through lessons to unblock more actions and manage your team with additional tools. How you want to use your energy. Your new checklist for management in real life. When your energy runs out, jump to the next day to fully recover it. Each night, we give you feedback to improve your management skills. Were you able to resolve conflicts correctly? Did you provide feedback correctly? Are you learning how to motivate the members of your team? Are you helping them improve performance and efficiency? You also find the evolution of your team and each of its members using a comprehensive scorecard. On the team tab, you'll have information sheet showing the person's characteristics and profile. Ask your 
each year to adapt your rewards. You accumulate leadership points by making correct decisions and managing your team effectively. And you compete with your coworkers to demonstrate who is the best. Eight. Give feedback. Reward. Resolve You be able in the game you can choose your character male or female from a, a physicality perspective and then you lead a team of three other people along with you to construct a hot air balloon to escape from the island right now if you speak about uh, the the knowledge bits right if you saw in the video it said that actions to communicate with your team members are blocked and for you to activate any single action, you need to first go and upskill yourself on a certain knowledge piece. Let's say delegate, which is the first action for <clears throat> that entire list, right? So you go and read a content piece, post the content piece. Uh, there is a set of questions. If you answer the questions correctly in the first go, you get a bonus score and you're then able to delegate tasks within the game. If you and this is typical from a learning perspective in our country, unfortunately, I have to say our country, where uh, uh, people just don't focus and say, we know it, we know it's sort of a scenario. And what they will realize is that when they hit the Q&A after the content piece, if they really haven't read the article or paid attention to it, they will have a huge challenge trying to answer the two questions that come up um, after the content, right? So the cycle is this, right? To activate an action, you need to go and learn the skill. Once you've acquired the skill, there is a small two Q and A that comes up after that. If you answer it correctly, you get a bonus score and you move on into the game and have the ability and the right to delegate tasks. If you do not get the answers right, you are sent back to the content to read again and you get a negative score. So post the first such experience by a learner who's playing this game and there are 22 content pieces built into this game, right? So normally what will happen is as humans, we are the first time you will have a lot of people thinking, okay, we'll see whichever way it goes and they might not focus on the content, but then when they realize that they're getting a negative score and they're being sent back to the content time and again, if they're not paying attention, that is when the, the psychological focus shifts automatically and saying, I better pay attention because if I'm not going to pay attention, I'm not progressing in this game one, two, if I'm not going to pay attention, I'm spending more time trying to complete the game. If I get a narrative score, there's a leaderboard and this is now coming back to the corporates, right? Uh, there is a leaderboard in which all my other team members who are playing the game along with me can see where I stand. So these are the, these are the subtle nuances built into from a psychological perspective that then force a person and it's a very subtle force. Trust me, it's not like a hammer and a tong force that you better read it, right? It's a very subtle understanding that the human being receives that he or she needs to focus on the content, pay attention, and then start applying the learning into the game. So part one is simply sharing of knowledge, right? And that is closed looped by the Q&A and plus and minus score line. Part two, is when you apply that knowledge within the game and start delegating tasks, if you delegate tasks accurately with uh, the complete understanding of the delegation mechanism uh, in the right method, then you again start getting a positive score line, right? If you delegate incorrectly, if you give a person who does not have the skill to do a certain task, 
then you will get a negative score within the game. And that's level two of trying to hardwire what is right and what is wrong. So as the gameplay progresses, right, um, you've acquired a skill, you've applied it. And every time you get a positive score line, the brain starts processing and saying, okay, this is how I'm supposed to do it. Now let's look at this scenario from the perspective that but what if a person already knows how to delegate? Let's say he's got five years of experience of managing a team and he's been doing very well because he's grown within the company. He's got multiple promotions. He's got a pay hike, etc., cetera, et cetera. What is the difference between that's my grandma walking at the back? Don't worry. What is the difference between, um, you know, the content and the skill that they will learn through the game to what they already know? And is there a difference? within the two, right? And this question is answered in this method. I might have experience and I might know how to delegate. The question I want all of you to think of is, is my delegation method 100% correct? Or is there a scope of improving my delegation method? And we're just discussing delegate now because that's the first uh, uh, thing that we started off with. Uh, and this is something that most of us do. We delegate uh, work to our friends, to our family, within personal, professional, all environments. It's a very easy thing. We all have hands-on experience to delegating work, right? So do I know it well? And is there a scope of improving? The game will slowly shift you automatically based on how you are engaging with the game to the right understanding of the better method of delegation. And that's how the shifting of the behavior happens, right? Unless the game is able to give me feedback and unless the game gives me an opportunity to apply my current knowledge in comparison to the new knowledge that I'm receiving through the game, I will never be able to bring in that change. And that's the beauty of the platform that GameLearn has created. So there's content and there's application. Without that application, you will never be able to shift to really implementing that change. While we are discussing this, okay, so um, how do we run games for change at scale while keeping it hands-on? Um, it's technology, right? Use and leverage technology. We are cloud-based. You simply receive an email, you click on a link, and you're into the platform, right? Accessible globally at the click of a button, multiple languages available, right? So there you go, you got your scale. We can take up to 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 people playing at the same time. Understand these are individual player games. So if I am playing, I'm playing in my screen, you're playing on your screen, and our scores are tabulating up to the leaderboard from the side. So let's say there are 100 people on this forum, and we're all playing this game simultaneously. We are playing in individual capacity, but our skill of playing is somewhere getting tracked and being represented on the leaderboard. So you got your scale, you got your competition, which is healthy because if there is no competition, some people might just pass it and say, you know, I'm not interested. I don't have the time for it. So it addresses a multiple uh, multiplicity of issues of how to make it more attractive, easier to deploy and ensure that uh, the learning comes through. So uh, that's that. Any other questions? Because I'm just rattling away based on whatever's coming into my head to try and fill in the blanks from a, a design structure perspective that you people need to evaluate and look at uh, when creating learning games. All right, that question ran away. Give me a second. I don't know what the full question is. Can game, okay, it disappears. Can games get towards behavioral change still be fun? I think uh, we've taken that. Will overguarding slow down the influence of behavioral change like providing map or hints of how to play? So, now, so, um, so to, to answer that, this is what I will say. Do you want to make the learning autonomous? If you want to make it autonomous, then you have to have a little bit of uh, influencing in the game in terms of guiding them into what needs to be done. You know, so over guiding is at the initial phase of uh, uh, it's like a tutorial built into the game where you showcase the different elements and you just guide them into the right direction for the first time. Because if you're not going to do that, then you will need a facilitator. You will need people who are going to need to ask answer questions continuously, 
and it's going to it's going to actually flow, slow down the process of learning so building uh, the game in an autonomous way that once the person accesses it from entering the game to exiting the game and completing the learning cycle right uh, there has to be some guidance built into the platform um, and it it really depends on uh, what kind of guidance you want to build uh, so either you have a q and a already there you have some videos which people can view and understand um, so it's it's this is something that can be discussed at length later on um adding on to it do you think school colleges in india will be willing to adapt to including educational games as a new medium of teaching as an enabler and not as replacement excellent point these are all enablers there's nothing you you can unfortunately never replace old school teaching because that is required at the at the uh, at the young age from probably 5 onwards to around 13 or 14 but enabling the learning is now happening with technology so these games are not only used in the corporate they are also used in the academic space right so we have a couple of universities using our games uh, for business schools right and they teach them leadership through this game for students who are doing mba um so yes definitely can be uh, included into uh, schools and academic uh, forums right any other questions i don't know if i've covered everything could i get some help with the the q and a in case if i've missed out something if i have just get, just raise your hand if your question hasn't been answered scope of educational games could you define what you mean by scope if you talking about adaptation within the education mechanism definitely a yes if you speak about how quickly the adaptation will take place that's a personal question for each school to answer to be very honest if you put it in my plate i would force it down the school's throat to introduce this at the earliest you know depth could you expand on that oh i i okay i think that's to the person who asked the question so yes um in terms of applicability do it now if 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 the schools have the vision they should do it now because it's going to take at least 2 to 3 years for the the platforms the technology the actual learning to start becoming integral to curriculum over 2 to 3 to 4 years it it takes some time because we are averse to technology the human race is averse to technology especially anything new and something with if you look at teachers and this i can speak very confidently of because i was involved with a school project where we were trying to implement the smart boards right in every classroom and the the teachers were extremely uh, stonewalling the entire concept because for them it was learning something new which they didn't want to do they are like no we don't want to we won't have the time so there's a lot of pushback that comes you know uh, such kind of questions where you start delving into um the dynamics of who has to implement why do you have to implement do you have the cost availability cost becomes a factor you know is is the game that you're going to design can you keep it free or will you need to charge an end learner because it is a learning uh, a mechanism right so cost will also be an important critical question to answer i will share with with all of you and uh, could um, madhulika could you guide me should i just drop the links into the discussion forum will everybody be able to pick it up a quick thumbs up if that works and i'll sim simply drop the links over here hi um yeah absolutely um if you yes definitely you can put it in the audience sure so now just doing that and let's see if this works audience public there we go everybody please confirm if you receive that i can see it over there excellent all right so i i found this it's a it's a ted talk by a guy called tim lanning if i'm not mistaken fantastic he runs a company and they design uh, games for uh, teaching change and behavior right beautiful 90 minute talk that he's given he's spoken about games like mario brothers uh, tetris and uh, pacman the simple the most simple basic games and how even they are you know they're designed to bring in change to uh, to human behavior so watch it uh, excellent stuff i will see if i can share the link to 
one second. Uh, Monica, um, there's also a, a set of polls that have been created. Oh, it's come do you up. Want me to, yes. Do you want me to make that active? Uh, yes, you can make it active, but I have a question. So we've headed into five o'clock. Uh, the hmm. poll was actually lined up for post a video. Now, do we have five minutes or is the other speaker yeah. scrambling for time? Yeah. yeah, we can take another five minutes. No problem. Excellent. I'm also copying two uh, documents that I found really interesting. And I'm trying to see if I can drop this into the handout section. So, handouts, um, handouts. All right. Will these, will the participants be able to see the handouts? Yes. Um, so, um, so. Yes, absolutely. So on the left hand side, uh, there is a there is a small icon called handouts right I, above the desk. So you should get a small little dot on it. Yeah. I've already posted one thing. So can people check if you see it? Nancy sure. uh, Phelps you, thesis. Nancy Phelps thesis. Okay. I don't think it's been uploaded yet. There'll be a small dot that will come up as a notification. Documents uploaded successfully. So I have two documents which okay. uh, are saying that they've been uploaded successfully. People, can you check whether it is visible to you? All right, we have the entire list here. Uh, while they're doing that, uh, would you like to walk them through the polls as well? Uh, can I then quickly switch on the video for them to watch? And Absolutely. then we'll do the polls? Sure. All right. I am moving to presenting my screen again. Please confirm once you see. Looking fine, quick thumbs up, and I'll go back to it. I think we're back to seeing you. Curioso como después de jugar los nombres, las palabras, las, las cosas que pasan durante el juego suceden en el día a día. Los intereses es algo que está hoy en día en recobro. Descubre los intereses del cliente. El plantearte la estrategia antes de hablar con el cliente en función de las conversaciones que tienes, yo creo que son cosas que, que me ha sorprendido que hayan impactado tanto en tan poco tiempo. Nuestro valor en el mercado va mucho más allá de la marca. Nuestro valor es la, la excelencia en el servicio. 
eh, os podéis imaginar que, que en una empresa así los, los empleados son quienes dirigen realmente la empresa, ¿no? Con sus con su sensibilidad atención al cliente, su trato, con el poder agilizar un proceso y llegar, llegar antes a, a las necesidades del cliente. Navieros uh, nos encaja mucho porque, por, en primer lugar, al ser un e-learning, nosotros, nuestra red comercial está dispersada por todo el territorio español. Entonces, los juntamos varias veces al año, pero tiene su coste ya no solo económico, sino también de oportunidad. Entonces, el poder hacer un e-learning, que tú mismo te puedes organizar el día a día y hacerlo cuando mejor te va, esto ya en sí es un éxito. Es que además el método es muy bueno. Y claro, el usar un simulador no es lo mismo que ir pasando pantallas y responder a un examen. No, no, no. Un simulador es mucho más real. Y, y, y tener que escribir tú mismo uh, las alternativas de respuesta y tener que escuchar muy bien al cliente porque si no, no vas a saber lo que quiere. Hace que después te fijes mucho más. Yo creo que el, el, el simulador, lo que por un lado, la parte competitiva te hace maximizar tu concentración. Eh, por otro lado, te hace... Eh, es atemporal. Tú puedes decidir cuándo lo haces, cómo lo haces y en qué situación lo haces. Por otro lado, eh, el competir, el jugar, te hace intentar sacar lo mejor de ti. Al intentar sacar lo mejor de ti, asimilas mejor la información y luego la aplicas en tu día a día. Porque la has asimilado de forma innata. Al final es eh, el hecho de que es diferente. Es decir, al final, eh, nosotros eh, cursos de negociación o formaciones de negociación hemos hecho unas cuantas, pero con este formato eh, ha sido la primera. Luego, como comentabas también, el hecho de que haya una competitividad, ¿no? pues al final dentro de lo que era la formación pues había un juego por detrás, que oye, había una clasificación y esto, pues eh, bueno, sin nato, todos pues el tema de competencia pues eh, nos gusta y creo que con este formato pues eh, las ideas y los conceptos se quedan se quedan más al final el modelo busca mucho el, el modelo la formación busca el modelo win win donde al final todos los que están ya sea cliente un colaborador un prescriptor eh, y, y nosotros mismos como como ofertantes o como oferta empresa de servicios y salgamos ganando y este win win realmente nos lleve a relaciones duraderas y no a cerrar sencillamente ofertas eh, en caliente y ya por la siguiente ¿no? pues con lo cual yo creo que el modelo es constructivo ¿eh? está claro que eh, al final una negociación que 100% sea eh, provechosa para nosotros y no para el cliente a la larga eh, tiene una fecha de caducidad o te puede llevar a un fracaso <risa> Bueno, esto es aplicable uh, tanto a... Monica, uh, I'm so sorry, I'll, I'll just have to ask you el... to stop right now because we're a little bit over um, and the other session has already started. So, um, we'd really appreciate... Thank you so much once again. Um, if you'd like, uh, you could share maybe the link to this video. Um, um, sure. Uh, let me try to find the link uh, one second. Let me just do that yeah. Now. It's right there. Um, one more thing that we could do is if you have a lot more, if the audience has a lot more questions for you, um, you can always move to the lounge, which is a button on the left, and you okay. can have much more um, intimate conversations with them. And it's a small table of like four mm -hmm. or five, and then you could have one-on-one um, -on -one discussions with them and continue this um, over there. Sure. Um, so quick question to everybody in case if you would like to uh, move to the lounge and have a quick conversation, raise your hands and I will shift over there. Otherwise, I won't. So it's all dependent on you. And uh, or if you want to connect with me later on, uh, you can get my coordinates and we can you know, have a conversation some of the time. Um, completely open to you guys to take a call on. Let me do. Let me shift to the lounge for 10 minutes. If somebody does drop in, then um, I'll have a conversation with them. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Um, this was really a fantastic session. Um, and uh, thank you all for being here as well and for the lovely, the fantastic questions as well. I hope you all are um, really, I hope you all are enjoying the sessions as well. Can I get a couple of um, likes if you guys are uh, enjoying it? And 
Okay, that's awesome. So um, I'd like to actually uh, ask you all to head over to um, there's a next session which has started off. Um, it's I'd like to call it a woman L or uh, a all inclusive women's panel, um, and it's it's a really nice one because we've got very um, we've got powerhouses who are in the um, panel itself, and um, it was on the diversity of um, games. So would like you to please head over there. Um, so in order for you to do that, if you need a couple of, uh, if you need a little bit of a, a hint, uh, just go to the left hand side, tap on staging. And the name of the talk is uh, Niche or Golden Opportunity, Creating Games of Social Impact. And we've got some wonderful, uh, wonderful speakers from Lena Kejriwal, who had previously won an award for uh, Missing Girls, um, a game on uh, to create awareness about sex trafficking. Um, Antonio Coop, she's uh, been incredibly relevant in um, sharing stories, survival stories um, for her work in Syria. We've got Anath Sperling, who is the founder of Toya, and she's empowering girls to code. And we have Sabi Liberman, who, um, you know, we always like to keep our panels well represented. So um, so he's going to be uh, moderating the panel and introductions are happening over there. So would love for you all to head there and just enjoy and experience the panel or the woman. See you all there.